So with that, uh, let's get started uh, with uh, conceptual questions. I did see quite a few questions that I haven't done here, so I want to get to that as quickly as I can. So um, let me not dawdle too much here. Uh, Perplexity.ai. And uh, we have four conceptual questions. Let's see how well Perplexity does. It, um, well, yeah, let's see how well it does. <laughs> um, uh, I, I do think it's getting better with uh, um, um, more advanced material. So um, I don't want to um, say anything that might be untrue, you know. If I say, oh, it's going to do terrible with these questions and then it does well, then, you know, it doesn't look good. So, okay, first question, compare um, electric field and magnetic field. Okay, um, it probably will do okay. We'll see. Um, there are easy features to get right, like uh, 1 over R dependence. And for comparison, um, well, let's see, that's kind of repeating the question, OK? <laughs> uh, radial dependence, yeah, decrease with distance. And it's not quite yeah inversely proportional, OK? Yeah, that's the same with the magnetic field. And dependence on line property, sure. Um, yeah. Don't know if I put this in the um, in the model answer because I guess I didn't specify the numbers. Oh. <laughs> I don't <laughs> read the model answer, so I do this, so I don't <laughs> remember what I put in the model answer. But sure, that seems right. Uh, differences, yeah. Field direction, that's the big one. Um, the electric field goes out radially and the magnetic field wraps around uh, the the current. So, yeah, magnetic field forms concentric circles. Yeah, that's the big one. And to kind of with this, the field lines do the same thing, or, you know, it's kind of a different way of explaining the same thing. Um, field equations. Um, yeah, I guess. They use depend on different constants, sure, I guess. That's a long list, uh, field generation. Uh, uh, sure, I, I guess that's not wrong. Um, yeah, this looks like a good list. Uh, I don't see anything that's obviously missing. Uh, what it had as number one is the one thing, and I guess what it has as number two is the one thing for comparison. Okay, uh, oh, this one, um, <laughs> Perplexity doesn't know what textbook we are talking about, so I don't think it's going to answer this correctly. Uh, it's a highly contextual question that um, really even, okay, that's a good follow-up question to ask. Let me give you the proper answer. OpenStax University Physics uh, Volume 2. <laughs> Um, maybe they'll get it right. We'll see. Um, is it, even if you were to ask this question to a tutor, they would basically have to go through the textbook with you unless they've studied out of the exact same textbook. Um, three of them. So, right-hand rule for magnetic fields around the current carrying wire. This is the exact same way your textbook notates it, so you might have gotten it right. Uh, magnetic force on the current carrying wire. Point your... Wait, did it just... Uh, no, no, no. Um, right hand thumb in the direction of conventional current in a straight wire, then crawl the fingers in, the in a wire and your fingers in the direction of... Uh, your palm will face the direction of the magnetic. Oh, I see, I see, sorry. Field and force. Um, I don't think that's... The different versions I remember... I thought I could be misremembering. Uh, it's giving you citations. Okay, Khan Academy, that won't be right. But okay, you have a uh, citation 8. In citation 18, or oh, maybe it is getting it right. Uh, I'm misremembering. <laughs> That's possible. Um, so, RHR1. Um, no. 
Uh, I do remember the notation your textbook uses as RHR1. So, RHR1, okay. Um, direction of magnetic force. Uh, uh, um, am I in the wrong section? Um, or it's possible your textbook actually has a typo. Let me click update it and see what it does. Uh, direction of the magnetic field by the right hand row. Um, determining the magnetic field is uh, defined by a force that, okay, I think that's fine. Um, yeah, I guess that this is a, a, it's a weird title to put, but I do think uh, within the section it makes sense. They are um, going with the, the um, kind of forces what you use to measure the field, but field is the fundamental one, so I think it's fine. Um, so this one actually relates to magnetic uh, force, not field and magnetic yeah so the reference that it gave or 11.2 i'm pretty sure it's a rhr1 oh wait um or rhr2 wait um magnetic field of per perpendicular to parallel conductor as indicated by right hand uh, let me search for R A chart. <laughs> Some of these are, you know, uh, idiosyncratic quirks on. Um, yeah, so okay, R A chart two is the magnetic force on a current carrying conductor. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So the first right hand rule is for uh, moving charge, and second right hand rule is the. Um, RHR2, your thumb, direction of current, it's the direction of field. So I think uh, the this references, it um, uh, swapped to these, because RHR1 got introduced earlier for the magnetic force, RHR2 got introduced later for the, um, yeah, for the field. Okay, mix up those. Let's see if we got this one right, because the third rule is the tricky one that's not, um, Screw rule. Um, that doesn't feel right. I'm pretty sure it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> we'll leave that there, <laughs> just to say. Um, you know, it's it's challenging task, it, and um, um, it's it's a challenging task to get them right, especially for a specific textbook. And I'm pretty sure um, it, it, this uh, uh, AI thing didn't meet the challenge. And um, let's see, can I find the um, third third right hand rule? Um, if I just uh, search for right hand rule, I might find this. So we had a one for force, one for field by straight wire, and the other right hand rule, which I my, I call shortcut rule, you might have is the right hand rule for a loop of current, and the what what the magnetic field inside looks like. Let me see if uh, now we have here. Um, Let's see, right. Um, <laughs> I probably shouldn't be wasting time here. Let's see. Uh, I, um, sorry, I shouldn't be wasting time. So let me actually look at my model answer because <laughs> uh, 
uh, that's the only way I can uh, find it in a relatively short uh, time scale. Let me because um, it's the I do know. Remember, third one it's not specifically numbered, so it's a, a challenging one to find. I'm gonna do this off a screen in my second screen where I can look at it without um, uh, revealing it to everyone. Um, so the third one. Um, yeah, so the first two right hand rows, those are right, and uh, the description of the third version, okay, section 12.6 is where it is. Oh, wow, it's one section farther. Um, and then let me go to the right hand row, yeah, you can, yeah. You can find the direction of magnetic field with a right hand rule. It would be RHR3 if they were numbering it correctly. Curl your fingers in the direction of the querent and your thumb points along the direction of the magnetic field in the interior of solenoid. Um, so those are the three right hand rules. And the, again, the role of the right hand rule is, uh, again, from the lectures that you should have seen. Um, role of right hand rule is to uh, when you have a cross product, the the definition of cross product defines the direction of the resulting vector to be perpendicular to the both of the two vectors that you have. The two vectors define a plane, and if you have a perpendicular direction to the plane, it's either one way or the other way. There are two possible choices, and the role of right-hand rule is to choose, or rather arbitrarily, between those two possible directions. And um, all the so the basic rule is the one that's tied to the cross product. So the right hand rule one that's tied to the magnetic force on a moving charge. And the uh, rest of the right hand rules are just uh, trying to stay consistent with it. And and uh, both the shortcut version or the, um, well, I guess the, both of them are shortcut versions. Um, uh, both the one for the you know straight wire of current, you could get the same result using Bio Sabart's law, which has a cross explicit cross product in it, um, or the loop of current. Again, you can get it uh, explicitly from Bio Sabart's law that has cross product in it. And the shortcut one just uh, cuts out some of the extra work and allows to get to the answer quickly. All right, that was way too long on that one question. Let's uh, finish this up. Um, and by the way, you know, if you miss a sum, it's fine. As long as, like, you know, don't literally copy ChatGPT answer, which isn't even right anyway, um, because I'm looking for something rather specific. Uh, um, Tesla is equal to a Newton times a second divided by Coulomb. Um, so if you're being strict with the order of operation, this is actually kind of wrong, but let me leave it that way. I think if you're being strict with the notation, it should be this way, but uh, we'll leave that uh, bad mathematical notation there for now. See how uh, GPT deals with it. I think most human beings, when they read this, they put both the column and mirror on the denominator. At least I do. <laughs> Some mathematicians might not. Uh, so in this unit, give a few typical values, okay. So moderate value would be like a millitesla, uh, earth field. Uh, but yeah, and uh, very large, anything larger than a tesla. Yeah, 1.5 to 7 tesla. Uh, yeah, 10 tesla is pretty big. Oh yeah, these are pretty good. And I uh, think this was for non-destructive thing. If you have a, like a destructive uh, thing, you can get higher, I think. Uh, what is considered small? Uh, I think a femtotesla is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the kind of the sensitivity of um, uh, sensitive magnetometers. So, um, like, uh, there, are, there are people trying to do a functional MRI. I guess, it, um, never mind. Um, <laughs> that's not my area, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I do know, so world's most sensitive magnetometers are either squid, superconducting quantum interference device, <laughs> um, uh, uh, magnetometers, that's one. And my old research group, they were working with atomic magnetometers. Uh, atomic magnetometers can also reach squid level of sensitivity and those uh, both reach around the femtotesla level. Um, yeah. 
Earth's magnetic field is 31 microtesla. This sounds so small. Um, it's like a um, uh, wait. Uh, so Earth magnetic field is about a Gauss, which is 10 to the minus 4 tesla. So 0.1 millitesla. Maybe this is about right. Uh, to about half a Gauss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, good answer. <laughs> it's me just uh, taking this long way around to kind of come to agreement with it. Okay. Last question. Um, yeah, uh, fem uh, ferromagnetism, paramagnetism, diamagnetism, probably not in that order. Um, <laughs> diamagnetism is the most common one. Um, so that really should come first. And paramagnetism, uh, uh, I, oxygen is paramagnetic. And I wonder if water is paramagnetic. Uh, chemists probably would know. Um, uh, and ferromagnetic material is the one that you will see most in our lab because that's where you see strong magnetism. Uh, it, uh, so, uh, I mean, you've uh, seen magnets in last lab. And uh, when we get to time-dependent circuits and you are going to build inductors, the core for that inductor is made out of ferromagnetic material because that will uh, enhance the, 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 the inductance of the, coil, uh, the, tor the toroidal coil that you build. Yeah, then opposite to, yeah, presenting all materials, yeah. yeah. So it's the most common one. Um, superconductor is uh, like, this turned up to 11. Unpaired, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These all depend on uh, basically some quantum mechanical explanation. If uh, classical uh, physics is all you had, then you all only thing you would have is diamagnetism. Um, most other types of common and including most chemical for ferritic compounds, yeah. I'm pretty sure oxygen is paramagnetic, but any other, liquid oxygen, I mean, um, in addition to gaseous oxygen. <laughs> uh, ask a chemist. Uh, ferromagnetic, yeah, large permeability, that's why we'll be using it in circuit components. Um, Inters from, yeah, magnetic domains, uh, iron color. Act as like small magnets. Wait, why is it not saying? Oh, yeah, domains. Oh, yeah. If, uh, current to loss. Uh, what? Okay, that is wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, let me, um, let me just. Are you sure about B? Um, my instructor said if uh, all we had were um, classical physics, then we would only see diamagnetism. <laughs> I don't know. Because um, ferromagnetism it involves, it requires quantum mechanics, you know, alignment between. Uh, yes, without. Uh, considering quantum mechanics because that's what it means to imagine all materials be made out of uh, current to loops uh, yeah yeah um, it's getting way complicated I all right, let, let me not <laughs> go down into the second rabbit hole and just leave it off there. Um, it, uh, um, yeah, it's fine. Um, uh, I don't even remember what I put in the uh, model answer, other than that diamagnetism is the... Um, um, but yeah, <laughs> magnetism, um, it, really the magnetism is materials, it requires material science, which requires quantum mechanics. So we'll just leave it there. I think that's a, a, a nice ending point if unsatisfying. <laughs>